Greetings Captains and welcome to the second VFR lesson in the Flight Sim School video tutorial series. My name is Thomas Rasmussen and to help me I have Flight Instructor Cameron aka Voidhawk9 from the explain.org forums. In the previous lesson we learned the basics of aircraft control. In this lesson we'll apply those skills to achieve precise performance goals flying straight and level. First some theory. In straight and level flight there are four basic forces acting on the aircraft. Weight, lift, in level flight this will equal weight, drag, thrust, at a constant speed this will equal drag. Notice that these forces do not all line up with each other and therefore they will create rotational moments or couples. Lift and weight create a nose down couple while thrust and drag create a nose up couple. Therefore they cancel each other out to some degree. Any residual rotational moments are compensated for by the horizontal stabilizer. The pilot will use the trim to set the force produced by the stabilizer to maintain straight and level. Now, as long as nothing changes and ignoring things like wind and turbulence, the aircraft will stay balanced all day long. In reality, however, we will from time to time change our thrust or speed or lift and weight will change as we burn fuel or drop payload, etc. Whenever any of these changes, the balance of the aircraft will be upset and it will have to be retrimmed. Let's for example see what would happen if we increased thrust. In the Cessna 172 this would cause a nose up moment. This is true for most aircraft although in some cases the reverse may be true or there may be little effects. This would have to be compensated if maintaining straight and level flight should be achieved. This is done by trimming the aircraft nose down achieved by decreasing the downforce by the horizontal stabilizer. Furthermore, in time when speed increases, lift produced by the wings will also increase, which will make the aircraft start to climb. If we now decreased thrust, this would cause a nose down moment, which would, if straight and level flight should be maintained, need to be compensated by trimming the aircraft to increase downforce by the horizontal stabilizer. Again, in time, when speed decreases, lift produced by the wings will decrease and our aircraft will start to descend. Enough theory, let's see how it works in practice. Ok folks, let's set up a training situation. Like in the last lesson, first select the Cessna 172 and be sure to load it with engines running. Select a location without too many mountains, I've chosen Charlie Yankee, Tango Zulu, Toronto City Airport. Set up the weather to clear so that you don't have too much wind and turbulence. I've set the time of day to around noon. Remember the parking brake and now set the RPM to around 1900. Pause the sim by pressing P on the keyboard. Again, since we'll learn how to take off in a later lesson, we'll cheat a bit and start ourselves in the air. Go into the map by pressing M and select an altitude of 3000 feet and an airspeed of 100 knots. At this speed and power setting, the aircraft is quite close to balanced. The aircraft should now be paused in a straight and level condition or at least close to it. Before we go on, we are going to note a few things about how straight and level appears to the pilot. There are basically five parts to straight and level. One, constant direction. Two, constant altitude. 3. Constant speed, 4. Wings level, 5. Aircraft in balance, thus not skidding sideways. Notice where the horizon is relative to the top of the instrument panel. This should be, or be close to, the angle required for level flight. This is known as the aircraft attitude. We will confirm and adjust this later as required. 
In order to maintain straight and level, we must use the elevator to keep that distance between horizon and top of the panel, the attitude, constant. Unpause the simulation and try to maintain level using this technique. Rising, moving down, aircraft pitching up. We need to gently lower the nose to set the attitude back to its original position over the panel. Rising, moving up, aircraft pitching down. We need to gently raise the nose to set the horizon back to its original position to regain level flight. And we're level. This is all well and good, but we need to be able to select and hold an altitude of our own choosing, not just the one we happen to end up at. Achieving this is simply an extension of what we just did to set and hold our altitude. Let's say we want to be at 4000 feet precisely. To achieve this, make a small attitude change to induce a slow gain in altitude. This is the same as what we did before, but instead of trying to stop a trend, we are starting one. Again, make the change small and allow time for the altitude to change. As we approach our desired altitude, stop the trend as you did before. If you got the change right, you should now be straight and level at or very close to the altitude you have chosen. This technique is for making small adjustments only, say 200 or 300 feet or so in the Cessna 172. Faster aircraft might use it for somewhat greater changes as they will climb or descend more rapidly. We will cover full climbs and descents in a later lesson. And we're at 4000 feet and it looks like we're maintaining level flight. For now we are practicing VFR, visual flight rules, flying, so 80 to 90% of the time you should be looking out of the window at where the horizon is and flying the aircraft. Only 10 to 20% of the time maximum should be spent looking at the instruments on the panel to confirm precisely what you are seeing outside. Use the trim to help it to stay there. Remember to make small, gentle changes to avoid overshooting past where you want to be. You may also require a little aileron to keep the wings level. Now we need to confirm that this attitude is precisely the one we need to maintain our altitude and therefore be truly level. Glance down at the altimeter. Note its reading, here we can see that we are ascending slowly. In order to get back to straightened level, we'll lower the attitude slightly, hold it and adjust the trim. Glance at the altimeter, then back up again. After a few more seconds, check it again. After a tweak or two to the attitude, you should be able to achieve precisely level flight. Setting and holding precise headings uses a similar technique. Again, we use our eyes looking out of the window primarily. If the wings are level and we are in balance, not skidding sideways, then we will maintain a constant direction. Choose a reference point outside to aim the aircraft towards. This may be a hill, a town, an airport or any other fixed point. Even clouds can be used if there isn't too much wind blowing them around. In this case I'm using the tip of a spit of land. Choose something in the middle to far distance. If you choose something too close you will fly over it and it will disappear rather quickly. Keep the aircraft pointed at that point with the wings level and you'll automatically be in balance and flying straight. You may also wish to note the actual heading of the aircraft as well as a confirmation that we are continuing on the same heading if you lose or need to change the reference point. 
in this case we're heading 60 degrees. If you find your aircraft pointing slightly off heading or need to change heading by just a few degrees, roll the aircraft in the appropriate direction slightly. No more than a few degrees is necessary. Again, allow time for the aircraft to gradually move to where you want it, then roll level and maintain it again. This is all well in a clean, non-changing configuration. However, in normal operation, we will be regularly changing speed and configuration, flaps, gear, etc. Let's disturb the straighten level by accelerating, increase RPM to full throttle, the aircraft will begin to pitch up and climb. To counter this, ease forward on the controls to stop the nose from rising. That takes care of the change thrust drag couple. As we accelerate, however, if we don't change the nose attitude, the aircraft will climb. This is because the faster we go, the more lift the wing will produce. As you accelerate, slightly push the nose attitude down just enough to prevent the aircraft climbing. Initially, you will need to estimate how much to push the nose down, but with a little experience you will know how much is needed. Then cross-check yourself with the altimeter. Adjust the attitude down or up as required to keep the altitude constant. Remember, these will be small changes. Now let's close the throttle and apply the reverse of what we did before. The nose will want to pitch down and the aircraft will begin to sink if you don't raise the attitude. As you see our altitude decreases so we need to get that nose up. Avoid flying less than 60 knots for now to avoid stalling. Full throttle and accelerating to 120 knots and repeating as many times as you desire for practice. Maintain altitude and heading as precisely as you can. The second consideration is flaps. When we lower the flaps, we increase the camber of the wing and thus the lift. As with accelerating, we will need to pitch down to prevent the aircraft rising. Furthermore, with flaps lower, we also have substantially greater drag. As a result, the thrust drag couple changes again, which in the Cessna 172 will cause a strong pitch up. Different aircraft may react differently to flap extension, however, some will pitch down instead of up. But that's not the end of the story. The increase in drag is also going to cause a reduction in airspeed. So we'll need to compensate for deceleration as we were doing just before. Let's practice maintaining straight and level while operating the flaps. Lower flaps one notch to 10 degrees. You'll need to push forward on the controls to prevent the nose rising. We're not done yet. Gradually your airspeed will be decreasing a bit. As this occurs, raise the attitude to maintain altitude. As the airspeed stabilizes, trim the aircraft to maintain steady at this speed and configuration. Lower the flaps two more notches to 30 degrees. The aircraft will really want to pitch up now, but hold the nose down with the controls and lower the attitude a bit more to maintain the same altitude. 
Now the drag has really increased as well, so you'll very soon need to start raising the attitude as the airspeed washes off. When you practice this yourselves, try to stay as close to the chosen altitude as possible. We'll reverse the process and start racing flaps and increasing speed. Raise the flaps one notch to 20 degrees. Flaps to 10 degrees. You may need to rise the attitude a little as the flaps start to come up, which will begin reducing the lift. Raise the flaps to 0 degrees. Okay, you'll need to raise the attitude slightly to counter the loss in lift. Then lower it a bit more as the airspeed continues to increase. Once we've regained an airspeed of 90 to 100 knots, you should be able to trim the aircraft back to straight and level in our original state. You may wish to practice this exercise a few times to get the hang of it. After a while, it becomes instinctive as we do it all the time. The attitude has to change up and down a lot, but it works. You may also wish to adjust the trim a couple of extra times in the exercise so that you don't have to hold the controls deflected so far. Remember, however, that as long as speed and or configuration is changing, the trim setting will need to change as well to hold the aircraft attitude. Any change in configuration such as wing sweep, gear, etc will probably upset the aircraft trimmed for straight and level and require a change in attitude to maintain the altitude and thus our straight and level. Just adjust the attitude and trim as required. The measure of how successful you are in this tutorial will be how precisely you can maintain your heading and altitude whether or not you are changing speed or configuration. Increased thrust or flaps will cause a nose up moment, whereas decreased thrust or flaps will cause a nose down moment. In VFR flight, 80 to 90 percent of the time should be spent looking out of the window. Why not look at the instruments more if they can show us more precisely our performance, heading, altitude, etc. The problem with most aircraft instruments is that they lag behind what the aircraft is actually doing. It takes time for changes to register, particularly altitude. While this lag may only be a second, by the time it shows up it will already be getting worse. There are techniques to minimize this issue, which we'll cover in a later lesson. But for now we are concentrating on visual flying. In the real world, you need to be looking outside all the time to avoid obstacles such as terrain, clouds or other aircraft. There is also an advantage to looking outside in that you can predict in advance that something such as heading or altitude will change before it does. This is because in most cases in order for heading or altitude to change, the attitude or bank angle must first change. If you see it change, you can change it back to where it should be before any significant change in heading or altitude can occur. This will greatly enhance your accuracy compared to looking primarily at the instruments. Next lesson will be about climbing and descending. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and found it useful. If so, please remember to share, like and subscribe. From Cameron and I, thank you so much for watching and see you very soon.